On today's show, Bosch gets dragged into the VW scandal. Mercedes wants to deliver packages from vans with drones, and we reveal the answer to yesterday's Farm Find Challenge. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 7th of 2016. Uh-oh, looks like Bosch, the largest automotive supplier in the world, could be in deep trouble over Volkswagen's diesel emission cheating scandal. Lawyers for a group of U.S. car owners filed charges that Bosch conspired with VW to develop software that could detect when the diesel engines were being tested for emissions. That software would then make sure the engine passed the test, but would turn off some emission controls when the test was over. Even more interesting, the lawsuit says that as far back as 2008, Bosch demanded that VW give it legal immunity for participating in the cheating. VW refused to indemnify Bosch, but Bosch went along with the plan anyway. You know, it sure is amazing to see that nearly a year after this story broke, this scandal keeps getting deeper and deeper, with no signs of it going away. Connected cars could be the most transformative technology to hit the automotive industry in 100 years, and everyone wants to get in on the action. Now Mercedes-Benz Vans is working on an autonomous electric van called the Vision Van. It features a fully automated cargo space that will load packages onto a drone for final delivery. The Vision Van is powered by a 75 kilowatt electric motor and has a range of 270 kilometers or about 168 miles. The concept is part of a broader new initiative called Advance. Get it? Mercedes will invest 500 million euros in the project over the next five years. Chevy says it can add 5% of range to the Bolt EV with one pedal driving. We'll explain right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Regenerative braking is a great way for an electrified vehicle to put some energy back in the battery that would normally be lost in the form of heat during braking. Now we're starting to see more aggressive versions from some automakers, and when it hits the market, we can add the Chevy Bolt to that list. The EV will have four levels of regenerative braking that range from light regen all the way up to level four which can bring the vehicle to a complete stop. With one pedal driving, as Chevy calls it, the range can be extended by another 5%. Well, it's time to reveal yesterday's mystery badge, and drum roll please, it's off of a Toyota Sentry. While a number of people got it, my hat goes off to two guys on YouTube who got the answer like that. The car was first created to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the birth date of the founder of Toyota Industries, and it's been used by government officials, diplomats, business executives, and even Yakuza bosses. The first generation like this one went mostly unchanged for a whopping 30 years until a major redesign in 1997. Still made today, it comes with a V12 engine and takes 43 craftsmen nine days to hand build. Definitely a very unique car. Coming up next, a look at why the Genesis brand believes it's in a better position to succeed in the luxury segment than Lincoln or Cadillac. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Could Hyundai have an easier time launching the Genesis brand than trying to turn around Cadillac or Lincoln? That's what Dave Zukowski, the CEO of Hyundai Motor America, believes. He tells Ward's Auto, quote, I would argue Lincoln and Cadillac have the tougher job, unlike us who maybe don't have a preconceived notion of what our brand is. And you know, he may have a point. One of the hardest things to do is change the public's perception of a brand. Having said that, Hyundai did it. It had a reputation for cheap, bland cars not all that long ago, but managed to turn that around. And we want to know what you think. Is Zukowski right? Will it be easier to establish Genesis as a new luxury brand? Or will Cadillac and Lincoln have an easier time reestablishing themselves as luxury brands? 
Peugeot just took the wraps off its new 5008 crossover before its official debut at the Paris Auto Show later this month. The seven-seater offers a wide range of powertrain options. Four gasoline engines and six diesels are available, and they can be mated to a five-speed manual, a six-speed manual, or a six-speed automatic, depending on the setup. It also offers the latest in safety and infotainment features. The 5008 will be built in France, and it goes on sale next spring. But that wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.